Aloha and welcome to this third WAD. This one's called Car Rental, where we're going to create an ER diagram for a, um, turns out a car rental company called Rented Junker. So let's start by creating the uh, ER, the Lucid Chart diagram, because we know we're going to want to do that. And create it, and we're going to call this ERD Car Rental. And let's get rid of the ones we don't care about. And then uh, I forgot that one either. And then we're going to create, add the ones that we do, which is basically these. OK. Um, so what are we going to do here? We've got a car rental company called Rented Junker. It creates a number of offices in cities and locations. We've got cars and trucks and different types. Um, we've got some customers. And when a customer rents a vehicle, we take some customer info. Customer is usually identified by their phone number. That means it's probably going to be the primary key, or at least an index. Um, when, when you get to the level of worrying about that kind of stuff. And then it says a customer can reserve a vehicle for specific days, can rent a vehicle, and can return the vehicle that, that she or he has rented. To make a reservation, the customer provides the location where they want to get the car, the type of the car the vehicle and the day and time for which they'd like to pick up and return. When they return the vehicle, then they, they need some info. Okay, so let's see. Well, let's just read through. So we, the first thing we're going to need is an office. That's pretty clear. Um, which is going to be a place where, you know, there are cars. Um, and it's going to have some location. And then it's got cars and trucks. So the question is, do we need an entity type for car and an entity type for truck? Or do we just need an entity type for vehicle? And then, you know, that's kind of good enough. And when I look through the rest of it, I don't really see a lot of specific stuff that, that's different for cars or trucks. So I'm going to claim that we just need a vehicle. So let's say, you know, it looks, at least at this point in the design process, it, it doesn't seem that you know, what's the difference between the van car type and the box truck truck type? I don't know. It's just another type of vehicle. Okay, so then we have customers. So that's clearly going to be somebody. Want one of those. Want a customer entity type, and there's going to be some info associated with them. And then we can reserve a vehicle, so we can make a reservation. Let's make one of those. And, you know, we're going to reserve some kind of vehicle. And then, uh, and then they're actually, and then there's the actual rental itself, right? So we're going to have a, a reservation and we have a rental. Okay. Okay, so at least upon initial kind of, per, you know, inspection, that looks like the, the set of, um, the set of types that we So now let's make some relationships with them. So we have offices, and uh, you know they maintain cars and trucks. So clearly we're going to have um, this kind of relationship where we have a vehicle, an office. A, whoops, a vehicle is associated with uh, one and only one office. A vehicle instance is associated with one and only office, but an office can have, let's say they could sell out. So maybe they could have you know, zero vehicle instances associated, an office instance could have zero, zero vehicle instances associated with, but maybe you know, many, okay? Um, and then, now let's have a reservation. So we wanna have a reservation, and a reservation can be associated with, um, So a reservation, a vehicle instance can have many reservations. Like, you know, I wanted to draw it in the right direction so I get closer to the right things, but it doesn't really matter. So a vehicle instance, a vehicle type could have many reservations associated with it. So that one should be, and it may have no reservations. So it could have zero to many reservations associated, but a reservation 
could be associated should be associated with one and only one vehicle. So let me change that to a one to one. Okay, now let's get over here to this rental. Okay. And here's where we have we you know there's kind of an epiphany, right? The problem is is that you want to rent a particular instance of a vehicle, but you want to reserve a particular type of vehicle. You know, I don't want to reserve that specific blue Chevy Cobalt, you know, when I call them up. I just want to say, I just want an economy-sized car. I don't care which one it's going to be. I just want any one of the ones you have. So actually, when we look at these two videos, we realize, you know, we need, this should really, we need two things. We need a vehicle type, okay, as an entity type, and that's the kind of thing we want to reserve. But then we also want an actual vehicle. And that's the kind of entity that we actually rent. Okay? So really what's gonna we're gonna say is that a vehicle type, a vehicle type can be associated with um, uh, let's say one to many vehicles. Let's just assume that we don't have a vehicle type if we don't have any vehicles in that type. But the, a specific vehicle is of only one one vehicle type. I think that's a good assumption. And once we've done this, now this makes a lot more sense. We say we reserve, you know, an economy car, but we rent a specific car um, we have a rental instance which is of a specific car, one and only one, and then a vehicle can be associated with you know, zero to many rental instances. So we can have a brand new you know, vehicle just on the lot, no one's rented it yet, so that it could be zero. But if you've done a rental, if you have a rental instance, you've always got a single vehicle associated with it. Okay, so that makes, now this makes more sense once we split that up. And, and theoretically, you know, this is the kind of process that when you do ER design, that's part of the fun of it, is kind of figuring out, you know, that as you look at your entities and how they relate to each other, and if you think it through, you start to realize when it is that you need you know, multiple things. Okay, so now customer, that should be pretty easy. So we say customer, um, we, uh, a particular customer could have many reservations associated with them. That makes sense. And so we'll say a customer could have zero or more reservations. But a particular reservation should be one and only one. And you know, with these zero or more, one or more, you know, it's open to interpretation. I don't, I don't, there's not, you know, that's one of these gray areas where really it's not specified in the problem exactly enough for you to be able to tell. So it's not like I'm going to take you, take credit off if you put a zero to one versus one to one in, in many of these situations. I, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's pretty clear here that you don't want to say that an office should have every single kind of vehicle, right? That, that kind of violates what, you'd intuitively feel like would be part of the domain, that you might have an office that only rents trucks, you know, and, and that should be okay, all right? But in other cases, um, you know, whether a customer, you know, can have zero reservations, I mean, you might say, listen, the only time we get a customer is when they come in and make reservations, so there's got to be one, and that, that's a reasonable argument as well. Okay, and then in a similar way, um, we can have uh, the same kind of thing going on for rentals, um, where we can say a cut, we can have a customer of zero or more. So let's look at let's finish this up by looking at the fields. So an office has we'll, we'll say it has a um, address, city, state. You can use the tab to tab back and forth. That makes things go faster. Vehicle type. I don't know. It's just the type. I don't think there's anything else that we care about so I can click on this and I can get rid of that extra field. A vehicle, it's got a type, what else could a vehicle have? I don't know. We don't really, you know, it doesn't really say. So let's just um, let's just reduce that to one. And we'll leave it blank for now because we actually don't know. A rental. So I think there's a there's probably a pickup date, a return date, and then the 
that's why I feel it's not necessary. A reservation uh, that has a pickup date and oops, and a return date. And again, these other things that we want to know about the reservation, like who it is and what kind of vehicle it is, that's expressed by the, the this relationship arrow, so we don't have a field for that. And then finally, customer, what do we know? We need the name, we need the address, and the phone number. That's taken out of that second paragraph there. Um, and so I think with that, we've got something looks reasonable because we can make a reservation um, and we have a customer and we have the type of vehicle and the date and time that they want to pick up in return. And then when a customer turns the vehicle to the clerk, oh, wait, so for the rental actually itself, if we want to, it looks like we're supposed to add in the odometer reading and the um, and the gas tank level. Apparently info when they return, you want to add to the rental thing what the odometer reading was at the end and the gas tank level. Okay, I'm not sure why, but you know, they're asking for it, so let's just put it into the, the diagram. Okay, so there it is, and we're supposed to show how to, that we can download it so that we can use it in some other things. So we'll say PNG, crop to content, and quality, download. Oh, damn, I did not, I did not start the timer. Um, I'll be able to figure this out. Um, so there's our thing. Um, I, I'll look at the the, uh, the actual video to figure out what time it was. Okay, so we've got our our um, diagram and we've got our list of charts, and I hope you enjoyed that.